As you may know, crop simulation in Blender can be a bit of a challenge. It's hard to find the balance between making it look realistic and not completely overwhelming your computer. But the population add-on from B Production is one of those tools that made the process a lot easier. If you've tried the first version, you will know how it made creating believable crowds a lot simpler. And now, with population version 2 that has been released, it seems like they've built on what they worked on and added a bunch of new tools to give you more control over your scenes. To give you a brief recap, the first version of the add-on brought 48 3D photo scanned characters, grouped into casual, business, and sports categories. These weren't your average low-effort models. They were created using photogrammetry and laser scanning so they had a lot of detail. They also came with 8K PBR textures and subsurface scattering, which are all ready to go in both Cycles and EV. And I think having them optimized for different renders was a plus, since it can save you a lot of time. One of the coolest features from the first version was the shader system, which lets you randomize textures on characters. This means you can use the same base character multiple times without ending up with the obvious clone army effect. For things like city scenes or stadium crowds, I found that kind of subtle variation really added a lot to the realism. Performance was another area where the first version did well. It gave you the option to use either low poly models, which is great for larger scenes, or low poly models if you needed something more detailed for close up shots, which I think was a nice touch especially for any of you working on budget machines or juggling lots of assets in a single project. The animations in the original population add-on were also a highlight of its power. There were over 50 motion captured movements, so the characters could do things like walk, sit, or perform everyday actions. Combine that with the crowd control tools and you had a lot of options for creating dynamic scenes, whether it was a busy office, a gym, or a public square. Now, the elephant in the room, population version 2, in which they have definitely doubled down on giving us more customization options. For starters, the follow curve mode has been expanded to include bidirectional paths. This means your characters can walk in two directions along the same curve. And you can tweak settings like spread width, random starting points, and probabilities for which direction they take. I believe this will make it easier to create realistic crowd movement in places like busy streets or shopping malls. Another new addition is group mode, which lets you control crowd density in specific areas. You can adjust parameters like size, density, and gradients, so you can have a packed area in one spot and a sparser group elsewhere. This feels really handy for things like festivals, rallies, or any large outdoor scene where the crowd isn't evenly spread out. And if you have used the follow curve mode in the first version, the new pinch and inflate feature might catch your attention. So basically, it lets you adjust the width of the path along the curve, so you can fine-tune how tightly or loosely your crowd follows the route. This gives you more flexibility to shape and follow your scene if you're working on a narrow alley or a parade route. There's also the new on-vehicle mode, which places characters based on the vehicles of a mesh, which I believe will make working with more complex layouts a lot easier. You can use it to align crowds along uneven surfaces, like a rocky cliff or a spiral staircase, without spending hours tweaking placement manually, which I think is a great time saver. The updates to stadium mode are important to mention too. So now you can use sliders to control probabilities for empty seats, which makes things like concerts or sports events feel more realistic. Plus, there is a look at target option, so characters can focus on a specific point, like a stage or a field, which I think can add a lot of believability to the scene. Also, one of the most intuitive new features is the paint mode. And this lets you use weight painting to decide exactly where your crowd should go. It is straightforward and kind of gives you a better control, which is neat if you are working on something like a bustle and market or a chaotic festival. And you can map out the crowd placement without fiddling with a bunch of parameters, which feels like a big win when it comes to usability. 
Beyond these additions, Population 2 introduces a variation slider that lets you randomize clothing colors after importing your crowd. This keeps things visually interesting even when using similar models multiple times in a scene. Another practical addition is the ability to enable or disable subsurface scattering before importing your characters. It is a small feature, but it gives you better control over rendering times and performance. On this version, they have also focused on stability, adding a loading bar for better progress tracking. It might not sound very exciting, but let me tell you. For me personally, it is a relief when handling scenes filled with hundreds of characters and assets to know how progress is going. Now, another thing this add-on has, you can clear lists with a click and adjust animations more intuitively and even load specific sets of three or five or even seven characters. And for those of you who want to try it out, Population version 2 is available now on Blender Market and there is a 30% discount for the launch, making it the right time to check it out and the link will be available in the description down below. And there you have it guys, I hope you liked this video, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.